So here we have the Ford S-Max Titanium Navigation on a 17 plate. I'm going to show you around the outside of the car first of all, and then we'll hop in and I'll run through a few controls on the inside. As you'll see from the outside, it's a five-door car with alloy wheels and tinted windows around the rear. We'll start off inside the boot and then work our way around the rest of the car from there. Okay, so as we approach the back of the car, you'll notice the reversing sensors in the bumper. This car's actually got sensors all round, and I'll explain that further uh, when we're inside the car. This is it in its seven-seat configuration. So this is the amount of boot space you would have with all seven seats in place. So let me show you what it's like when the two rear seats are folded down. So there we are with the two rear seats folded down. As you can see, you've got a massive amount of boot space. Those three, what would be middle seats, also fold down independently of one another as well. Okay, so we're just going to work our way back around to the front of the car now before I hop in and run through a few controls. Uh, but now that we've done a full circle of the car, you can see it's in fantastic condition the whole way around and looks brilliant in this ruby red colour as well. Just briefly before I climb in, I think it's well worth seeing the interior from this exterior point of view. As you can see, the seats are as good as new, as are the carpet areas. There really is quite a lot to run through on the dashboard, so let's hop in and we'll do that now. Okay, so now that we're inside the car, we're going to start off with the dials. We've got the rev counter on the left and the speedometer on the right-hand side. The total miles of this car in the middle there are 8,277. Now, there are uh, lots of different variations of the trip computer on this car, so you can go through things like uh, your entertainment, so the music you listen to, the satellite navigation, you can go into a phone menu. So, for example, if we hit entertainment, it will show us uh, what radio station we're listening to or what music we're listening to currently. And then on the left-hand side, uh, you'll see we've got a second trip computer. Well, this one's the main one really for driver controls and those sorts of things. Uh, this is all done using the buttons on the steering wheel, which I'll show you now. So these ones control the left-hand menu, and these control that menu that's in the middle of the screen there. Uh, beneath the left-hand side arrows, we've got cruise control and speed limiter. And on the right-hand side, stereo controls, as well as voice activation for the phone. So once you pair up a phone, hit that button, ask it to dial someone in your contacts list, and it will do that for you. Uh, the main screen over in the centre here uh, is where the phone itself is initially connected, where your satellite navigation is displayed, where the uh, climate control is displayed. It's all touch screen, so top left hand corner is for the phone, top right hand corner is for the satellite navigation, bottom right hand corner is for the uh, dual zone climate control, and anything music related is in this box down here. So you'll see, in terms of ways of listening to music, over on the left here we've got AM, FM, DAB, radio, CD, USB input, and then Bluetooth audio, an SD memory card, which is really set aside for the satellite navigation uh, and an auxiliary in socket. So loads and loads of ways to listen to music on this car. Uh, beneath that, we've got the CD player just here, your volume uh, and things for the stereo. And then underneath that, dual zone climate control. So you can adjust the temperature on the left and right hand side of the car independently. The fan speed in the middle here, either hit air conditioning just to turn the air conditioning on or hit auto and it will maintain the temperatures that you've pre-selected for the car. Uh, beneath that, if we open up this box here, we've got the two USB sockets and an auxiliary socket as well as a 12 volt charging socket underneath there. And we have a second one of those which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, we've got a six speed manual gearbox and then either side of that we've got a few buttons. So this is for the electronic handbrake. This one will turn off or on the front parking sensors. That turns off the stop and start, so the car's designed to cut out in traffic to save you fuel. Press that button if you wish to turn that off. And this is uh, park assist. So when you push that button, you'll get this come up on the main screen. Basically, the car will park for you. On either side of the road, either parallel par parking or perpendicular, uh, it will do it all for you. The wheel will turn by itself, um, and you can turn that system back off again. Lastly, in the centre armrest here, we've got a second 12 volt charging socket, which is particularly handy for rear passengers that might want to charge iPads and things like that. All that leaves me to say is thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you'd like to come and see the car in person and have a test drive, feel free to give any of our MJA sites a call. We'd love to hear from you soon.